So here's the deal. You've got a retro game collection. You've got a Super Nintendo, you've got a Tower of Power, but you also got like an LCD TV and you've got, I don't know, a capture device that only takes HDMI. This is all you're gonna get out of these things by default, at least in North America. What do you do? You can get HD retrovision cables for like the Super Nintendo, but then you gotta make sure that your TV is compatible with it because it only outputs 240p. It's a mess. And that is why this exists. This is the OSSC, Open Source Scan Converter. Basically what it does is it takes component, VGA, and this big chunker right here that many people in North America probably won't be familiar with called SCART. It's a rather large connector that can carry composite video, RGB, uh, which is kind of like VGA, but not really, it's a little bit different. Basically it was like HDMI before digital signals were a thing, or at least for video. A lot of these older consoles actually had the ability to output RGB. And what's the most convenient way to get it? SCART, it can carry it, it's fine. So we don't need to worry about any kind of ridiculous converters or anything. These just exist in Europe and also in Japan as the uh, JP21 connector. All you need to do is plug one end into the OSSC and the other into your console here. And as long as your console is either RGB modded or in the case of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, uh, it can output RGB on its own, then you're fine. You have a very clean signal coming out of your retro console. Now there are other options available for you if you just want to get your retro game up on a TV. You've got these uh, kind of inexpensive uh, Raz Fox AV to HDMI converters that just basically take your regular barrel plugs and uh, spits out a digital signal. The problem is they're using these barrel plugs and this is just composite video. Basically it's taking the entirety of the video signal. So chroma, luma, that is the color information and the brightness information, and just combining it. What you get is a lot of interference. Compared to RGB, which has the red, green, and blue, and synchronization all on separate lines. This is a vastly inferior uh, connection standard, at least as far as resolution goes. I guess we can take a look at the actual unit itself a little bit more closely. So we have Again, these component inputs and uh, SCART, as well as VGA. There's the barrel jack for the power. We've got an LCD on the front that is backlit. You can turn the backlight off in the options if it bugs you. It's got two little buttons for control here on the uh, kind of recessed in the inside here. And it has a JTAG port for programming. You won't really need that because it also has a uh, micro SD card slot through which you can actually load up a micro SD card with firmware and it'll just flash itself. But if you ever bricked it for some reason, then you have the JTAG port. Aside from that, we've got two audio inputs. These are both three and a half millimeter. Uh, these go with uh, the component and for the VGA, whereas SCART carries its own audio. This is one of the standard remotes that comes with it. It is a lot more complex than it needs to be, just as a result of it being a universal TV remote. It's just kind of a standard one. I'm not sure if there's like a model or any distinctive markings or anything on it. I don't think so. But yeah, this one has an overlay applied for the OSSC, and it tells you all of the different functions that you're able to access through the remote directly. So we have all the different controls for the first input, AV1, which I believe is the SCART. AV2, I believe, is the... Uh, component and AB3 would be VGA. I think that's about it for the remote. There are more settings we can tweak when we have it up and running, but well, we'll have to get it up and running for that. Let's get a baseline by using the Razfox AV to HDMI converter. This will give us basically the same kind of image quality that we can expect on a typical TV these days. Not quite what we would have gotten on a CRT back then, but nothing is quite a CRT these days. This does not look good. I don't know how well this is coming through on the camera, but there's all kinds of artifacts here. Um, a lot of it might be just because this kind of cheaper Razfox box here, I think might expect 480i versus what's currently being displayed, which is 240p. The problem with that is that 240p was never standardized. It has all these weird graphical bugs. And just in general, you can see how the, 
hard lines there kind of change color between like green and magenta and well, let's just play it for a minute and see how the latency is anyway. It's not perfect, but it's not terrible either. If, it's, if there's any lag, it's probably like one or two frames. This feels a lot like just playing with an emulator where there's a little bit of lag. Uh, there are options available now that allow you to run the emulator ahead of time, which is kind of interesting. It's like time traveling. So you can actually get latency that's less than the uh, original consoles. But uh, in this case, this is the original console, and I think all the latency is both in the box itself, which might be a frame maybe, and in the display. So that's what Super Nintendo looks like. Let's, uh, let's flip it over to Sega and see what that looks like. That is super blurry. Like, the text is barely readable here. You can see 1994 Sega. It's like full of rainbow artifacts and all that kind of stuff. I don't even have to explain what that is. You can see it. There's just colors where there shouldn't be colors. Oh man, that's distracting. That signpost there. Ooh. Don't do this! <sighs> Why not? Because it doesn't do anything. You just, the best way to do it, let me show you. Feel that? That's friction. It'll take the dust off. Fun fact, you don't need to press the eject button on the SNES. No, you don't have to. They just thought it would be fun. Oh. But if the SNES is on, it won't come out. Oh. That's an Anthony tech tip, everybody. Retro tech tip. Now let's grab the OSSC and see how that works. Now you may be wondering where we get these cables. These aren't exactly commonplace in North America and they've been obsolete for a fair while now. These came from Retro Game Cables, a company in the UK that actually builds these. This is their uh, Universal SNES Pack-a-Punch, or actually Universal Nintendo. It works on N64 and GameCube as well. And here we go. This is a four x three picture and it looks ridiculously sharp. So the first thing that's very obvious there's no ghosting whatsoever. This actually looks more or less like an emulator. Now this is an analog signal still. It's just, analog can look good. Like VGA used to be really good. This is more or less the same thing as VGA. It's just, you know, not quite. One of the big things about the OSSC is that it's actually taking the input that it's receiving and looking at it line by line, not frame by frame. So there is less than one frame of lag and I can feel it. It is smooth. This game could be flaky. Might need to clean it. I'm telling you, it's blow on it. Now that that happened, let's try Sega. You can clearly make out the text. I'm sure you can even make it out from way back there. There's no rainbow in this waterfall. There's no rainbows anywhere, which I mean, nothing against rainbows, but they're not supposed to be there. That's the difference between having like a good analog signal and a bad one. And RGB, even though it's analog, is still way better than well, anything else other than if you can get pure digital out of the console, which requires a mod. There's a little bit of wonder in seeing something this old fire up and output an image this clean. And for that matter, there are people like speedrunners who actually need to be able to verify that their run works properly on an original console. I would say that this is probably your best bet. Got 150 bucks. It's not a huge investment and it definitely makes a huge difference. This or the uh, Rad 2X cables based on the retro tank from Retro Game Cables. This was a bit of a different video than usual, as seems to be kind of a theme when I'm on camera. <laughs> but uh, if you want to see something else uh, similar to this, maybe check out Alex's iMac teardown <laughs> that he did. And uh, oh, the uh, SD to SNES, the um, cartridge to uh, ROM adapter that we reviewed a little while ago on LTT. Thanks for watching and subscribe.